Hello everyone. Welcome to 11.785 Recitation OH, Deep Learning Training Monitoring. In this section, we'll study how to monitor training of your deep learning models, which will be crucial when selecting model architecture and hyperparameters. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll use a n-gram language model, which computes the probability of the target word given n minus one previous words. Um, not, note that you are not required to have any prior knowledge of this model as this is used for demonstration. Okay, to go through the code real quick, we first load our training validation data sets with some necessary information. Uh, the data set initially looks like this, which looks like a Wikipedia article. And then we eventually, um, so we printed out some of the tr um, training and validation sets. Um, what this is showing is we map each of these vocabulary in the index, and then we used um, two of them as a training data to predict the next word, um, completing, completing the trigram. Um, and we have it for validation, training and validation, and uh, this, these are the number of uh, samples in these data sets. Okay, so we, and then we define our n-gram language model, load, some utility functions um, with the training and validation. Okay, so when monitoring training of deep learning models, um, there are several metrics you could follow to ensure that the models are being trained well and to um, choose a combination of hyperparameters or early stopping rule, you know, that can help you eventually choose the final model. To introduce some general metrics, training or validation loss. Loss is probably the most fundamental metric you could follow um, as it is most related to training. You want to check whether it is decreasing, how fast it is decreasing, how far it is decreasing eventually. Um, it is often used for scheduling learning rate, which will be discussed later in the course. Train or validation time is also another important metric that you um, may want to follow, as it often tells you about the performance of your code. If training is taking too much time, you may want to check your implementation of data loader, model, and etc. Um, there are some task specific metrics as well. The most widely used ones are um, accuracy, F1, precision, and recall. Mm -hmm. They can be used in a wide range of machine learning tasks, plus other uh, metrics like hit rate for recommender systems, Wallenstein distance for language modeling, and blue scores for text summarization are also used. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about the importance of training or validation time is that in um, these met this metrics is especially important um, if you want to implement the model, um, deploy a model in a more industry setting um, where, you know, um, inference time or training time actually matters um, to the users. Okay, so in this example, we'll track train loss, train accuracy, validation loss, and validation accuracy. Um, um, to give you a little heads up, we'll, we'll be training two different models with slightly different hyperparameters. And then we'll demonstrate um, how you can keep, keep track of these metrics to um, see the differences of these two models and, and choose the mod, uh, final model that you want to use. Okay, so here first we have the hyperparameters defined number of epochs as 20 and learning rate as 0 0.001. Um, for the loss function, we're using negative um, log likelihood loss, fun loss which um, you'll be just le you'll learn later in the course. For the model, we define an n-gram language model. Uh, and then we also define a um, stochastic gradient descent optimizer with learning rate of uh, 0.001. Okay, so from training function, we um, get the training loss. Tra this training loss is usually the average train loss uh, for the entire batch and for the, and, and for the entire samples as well. Um, we also get training accuracy and the number of uh, seconds of time that it lasts for this one training of one epoch. Uh, from validation, we get the accuracy and the loss as well. Um, it is also very common to print out, um, you know, so for here, epoch batch and loss uh, is shown. So, it, so if you go back to the train function, uh, we can see that if I, so every thousandth batch, we're printing out the uh, current batch, current epoch, and um, the loss at the current epoch um, information. So we can, you know, keep track of the training. At the, and at the end of each epoch, we also uh, print out the average train loss, training time, um, validation loss, and validation accuracy, accuracy etc. So 
Um, this is for the tracking, uh, the training as well. And then we finally store these metrics in our um, uh, metrics one variable, uh, which I defined as a, a dictionary of list. Uh, but you, you're, you can, all, of course, uh, use any of your uh, favorite data structure. Okay, so to demonstrate how you can use these training metrics and choosing the best model, we'll train another model with a slightly different hyperparameter. Um, so for this model, we'll train with a slightly lower running learning rate of 0 0.001. Note that in model one, I uh, will just call this model one, um, we use the learning rate of 0 0.001. So this is using a one tenth of the learning rate, and then we we store all the metrics and metrics two variable, um, and the rest of the steps are essentially the same. Okay. Um, so now that we have trained these two models and saved their metrics, we will um, use them to visualize and see the differences a little more clearly. Okay. So to explain this plot a little bit. Um, on the y-axis, we can see train loss, train accuracy, validation loss, and validation accuracy. And on the x-axis is the number of epochs um, that the model has been trained. And as you can see, the blue lines um, stand for model one with learning rate of 0 0.001. Model two, um, or, or this orange line is with model two, um, trained with learning rate of 0 0.001. Okay, so, um, for the train loss, uh, you can see that for both models, it's actually showing a pretty good shape of, um, you know, decreasing um, this kind of uh, shape. However, the, you can see the difference slightly more clearly uh, from the validation loss part. So here with model one, it seems the validation loss decreases um, until up until epoch five, and then it starts to rather increase um, rather than decreasing. Um, this is a strong indication of um, strong indication that your loss is diverging and because your learning rate is a bit too high and of course you'll be dealing with the details of this um, the reasoning behind this uh, in the course so uh, from just from these plots uh, we can see that uh, for for model two however you know we, we're still seeing the constantly decreasing validation loss um, even at the end of um, what uh, the 20th epoch, it, it may you know decrease um, over the next epochs as well. And um, it also shows well in the validation accuracy. As you can see, model one sort of achieves a pretty high validation accuracy in an in the early training step, and then it starts to decrease. Um, this is because it has such a high learning rate; it it reaches its um high point rather early. However, for model two, um, you know, it takes a lot more epochs to uh, reach the same level of validation accuracy as the model one. For example, um, this point of crossing is at epoch, um, epoch eight or the ninth epoch. However, eventually um, the loss, you know, decreases constantly and eventually it, it, it surpasses the model one's um, highest performance and um, as I stated earlier, it may even increase more if you, if you uh, let it train for a longer epoch. Okay, so here was the restation OH for um, monitoring your monitoring the training of your deep learning models, and I hope you found this uh, restation helpful. Thank you.